Welcome to an introduction to accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For further information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com or look us up on Facebook, Parkbench Tutors. In this short podcast, we are going to try and relate the idea of the accounting equation to the debits and credits that we met earlier. The idea that we had was that what a business has minus what it owes is what it's worth, which we expressed in terms of assets minus liabilities equals equity. And what we said was that we could say that this was the accounting equation. And the accounting equation always has to balance. So accounts will fall into groups and each account will have a balance. The balance is either going to be a debit or a credit. Let's just take a simple idea. Dylan Owen, with £8,000 of savings, starts a fishmonger's business by opening an account with the bank. So he deposits £8,000 in the bank. That's his asset. So we debit the bank account with £8,000. The business effectively is now worth £8,000. So we credit a capital account with £8,000. So our accounting equation is 8,000 minus 0 equals 8,000. In other words, it balances. Now Dylan borrows 6,000 from the bank and he uses the money to buy a van for the business. So borrowing money from a bank is a liability. We credit a loan account, which is a liability account, with 6,000. And we add a vehicle, which is another asset. So we debit the vehicle account with 6,000. We now have 8,000 plus 6,000, that's 14,000 as assets. Subtract the 6,000, which is our liability, 14,000 minus 6,000 equals 8,000, which is the equity. You can see the accounting equation is still balancing. Now he's got to buy some fish, he's got to make his business work somehow, so he buys some on credit from Halibut for £250, he sells them again for 600 We'll just take the first part of this, his £250 transaction. So, he owes another £250 because he bought them on credit. So, 14000 minus 6250 Okay, where's the other 250 going to go to? Well, it's a purchase. And a purchase is, for the moment, reducing the amount that he's got, so the business is worth slightly less. So we can say that 14,000 minus 6,250 equals 77,050. So the accounting equation balances. should let you know at this point that for many businesses, if they get to buy and hold materials, then we would regard it as inventory. But fish, of course, is going to be bought and sold pretty much on the day. So we're not going to treat that in the same way. We're going to treat that as a purchase. Now he sells them for 600, so he has another 600 pounds in the bank account, and he has a sales account, which is a credit of 600. So he debited the bank account with another 8,000 with another 600 to give it 8,600, and we can see that the accounting equation 14,600 minus 6,250 equals 8,350 still balances. The accounting equation is always going to balance. What you might also be noticing now is that the equity is increased or decreased as a result of the business activity and originally the accounts that recorded all that activities were referred to as profit and loss accounts but you may see them more commonly now referred to as income statement accounts certainly if you use accounting software you'll find them called income statement accounts or IS accounts or just income accounts at times the asset liability and equity accounts are the balance sheet accounts so we've got some different account types. We've got assets, liabilities, equity, and we've got income and expenditure which relate to determining whether we're going to make a profit or loss from our business activity. And every one of these accounts can have debit or credit entries. Let's just give you a little recap of that. So if we start a business by investing 5000 by opening a bank account, we'll debit the bank account with 5000 we'll credit a capital account with 5000 So we've increased the asset of cash and we've increased capital and that's the effect a debit increases an asset account a credit increases an equity account 
which means the reverse is also true. Credits decrease assets and debits inc decrease equity. Right, Patricia now takes out a loan of 4000 from the bank, so we have another debit into the bank account because we've increased the asset of cash again. And, of course, we've increased the liability, so we credit the loan account. Right, credits increase liability accounts. Debits will in decrease the li liability account. Okay, now we, she's going to buy £2,000 of clothing, and we're going to call that inventory. She intends to sell the clothing, so we're going to credit the bank account with £2,000, so the asset of cash is decreased, but we're going to debit an inventory account this time, because the asset of inventory has increased. In other words, we're treating what she's bought this time as an asset until it's sold. So, she sells the clothing for 3500 and receives cash. So we're going to debit the bank account with 3500 and we'll credit sales with 3500 because the income from sales is increasing. The asset of cash is also increasing. Right? Income account increases with a credit. It will decrease with a debit. And now we have to adjust the inventory. In other words, adjust the asset account because we no longer have it. So we're going to credit the inventory with 1000 which is how much inventory we sold, and we're going to debit a cost of goods sold account with £1,000. And just to complete this idea, let's take an expense. She pays an electricity bill for £100 by cheque, so we'll credit the bank account because the asset of cash has been decreased, so we'll credit it with £100. And the expense of electricity has increased, so we'll debit the electricity account with £100 to reflect that increase of the expense. So, if we can sum up with what we're doing with these accounts, debits will increase asset accounts and they'll increase expense accounts, but debits reduce liability, equity and income accounts. Credits increase equity, liability and income, but they decrease assets and expenses. All accounts are said to have a natural balance, and a natural balance, when you see that term, it means the action that increases the account. So for assets and expenses, the natural balances are debits, because that's what increases them. And for liabilities, equity and income, the natural balances are credits, because that's what increases them. This ends our short port podcast, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information, you can find us on Facebook, Park Bench Tutors, or you can look up parkbenchtutors.com.